Welcome to Savvy Business, Life Unscripted, with your host, Christina Rivera, where our guests share their wisdom and valuable business tips, empowering our audience to expand their personal potential. Hi, welcome Jamie Dixon to Savvy Broadcasting, our, our biz show. I'm so grateful to have you here today. We're going to talk about a very important topic, and that is how leaders shape the stories that drive action. It's really the stories that really motivate people, get them on your vision and to move forward. Just telling them you need to meet a quota isn't going to get people launched out there and getting things done, but you are also the owner of Shaping Path. And I'd love for you, before we go to all of those yummy details on how leaders shape stories, share a little bit about your backstory. I know you have a very fascinating backstory. <laughs> Thank you. Well, um, I'm originally from the UK, but for the last 15 years, I've been based in China. And I, I came to China as an escape from reality. Uh, I, I graduated from university. I was working in a coffee shop and I thought this isn't going very good. I, I uh, <laughs> three years at university and I'm working in a coffee shop and one day uh in a bit of a strop I had an argument with my girlfriend at the time mm. and I thought oh to hell with this I'm leaving the country and um I uh, you know long story short uh three weeks later I landed in China and wow. um ev everything happened in such a rush after that argument I submitted my CV to a teaching English as a foreign language website mm. um thought I was overreacting a few hours later, but the next morning I had job offers from all over the world and China was one of them. Wow. And I'm the kind of person who really likes to think things through, but that job offer, the, the one that really appealed to me said, can you be here in three weeks? And everything happened in such a rush that um, I just, <laughs> I didn't realize what I was doing until a few weeks after I'd landed in China. Um, and it's kind of good it worked out that way but yeah. since i arrived in china I, I i taught english for a few years i learned mandarin in my spare time and then used my my mandarin to get into corporate and that was my introduction to to leadership development and mm. since uh since 2014 i've had my own business um doing leadership development trainings uh all around china and the asia pacific region yeah wow you know, that, that is fascinating, Jamie, because I recall many years ago, we had someone on from Moscow and he was a, um, a leader teacher. And he said, you know, um, teaching, uh, training, corporate training. And he said to me, when, you know, when I train people in, in the United States, uh, corporate leaders or whatever, or I train someone in Russia or other countries, every country has its culture and mm. way to teach, like everyone has their own thinking. Uh, mm. How was it for you coming from UK? Was there a learning curve to understand the culture and to teach yeah. the culture? Uh, absolutely. Um, and, you know, as an example, when I started doing uh, uh, corporate training and coaching, I worked with a lot of uh, international training companies, for example, mm -hmm. European ones and American ones. And they were giving me, give me their training programs to, to run for their clients over here. And I noticed a massive difference um, because in the West, we are a lot more conceptual in our thinking. Mm. We, we really like to think at a, at a high level, um, abstract concepts, and, and we really like to kind of play mental gymnastics with those. And you know, it, it makes us sound really smart and intellectual, and in some ways it is, but in, a, mm. in many other ways, it's also not very practical. Um, and what I find with the Chinese is, they are so grounded in their thinking. Mm. Uh, everything needs to be presented in context. Everything mm. needs to be focused on a problem. And what is the specific problem you're talking about? And they don't care about your concepts. They mm. care about real life examples. And you know, I have this problem. Is this going to help me solve my problem or not? And I, I, I found the, uh, you know, the Western approach. It really didn't work <laughs> in the training room over here. I had to focus on your real problems and, you know, what is an actual solution that you can start using for those problems. Wow. They're, they're incredibly practical people. I love that. We need to get that. We yeah. need to take that upon in our culture because I love the practicality of let's just get to the nitty gritty. What's the problem? How do we fix it? Now, I'm guessing yeah. uh, because our story today or, or our chat today is how leaders can shape stories. Have you used stories to illustrate practical matters of how you can help people in you know in yeah, i mean i i mean i i um 
So several years ago, I, I published my first book called Shaping Paths, How to Design and Deliver Practical Training. And for me, practical means tools, tips, techniques in context in a mm. context that is relevant to them. So mm -hmm. stories uh, are a big part of that. Um, uh, specifically a story about a situation with a challenge mm. uh, that they can relate to. So that's definitely a, a big part of it. But um, I, 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 another application of storytelling that I've discovered over time is goes beyond just telling stories. Mm -hmm. and understanding the stories that people believe in mm -hmm. and how to kind of shape those. And uh, a lot of the work I do right now with Chinese leaders is they are working in a multinational organization mm -hmm. and you know they're Chinese, they have their Chinese culture, their Chinese way of doing things, and they really struggle to influence their stakeholders overseas. And one of the reasons is because their stakeholders overseas have all of these stories about the way things work in China. And, you know, uh, I, an example is a, uh, a European company makes coffee machines. The Chinese, <clears throat> Chinese team wanted to start selling the coffee machines on um, China's biggest e-commerce platform, Tmall. And the European headquarters refused to because they thought, well, no, that's where all of this counterfeit, uh, all of these counterfeit products are sold. And, we have our website and customers should come to our website because we're a premium brand and we don't want to be on those. And mm -hmm. those stories just don't align with the reality on the ground. I'm guessing that based on the story they had, which was completely false, you were able to go in there and say, okay, here's the story as it is reality and help them bridge a gap using uh, this, you know, the story of reality saying, okay, this is what you think goes on, but this is actually what's happening in reality. Yeah, so what, what I do is I, mm -hmm. I work with people, in, in that mm -hmm. case, uh, specifically the Chinese leaders, mm -hmm. to help them understand what forces are shaping those stories and mm -hmm. what you can do. And the, the forces that are shaping those stories, I mean, a big part in the last two years in particular is, is the media, because mm -hmm. China has essentially cut itself off from the rest of the world you, mm -hmm. you can't really come in into china for a business trip so you can't see for yourself how things mm -hmm. are working on the ground yeah so the only way a lot of these foreign leaders are getting their information about china is from the media um uh, and their chinese colleagues are not so great at speaking up uh communicate quite indirectly so first understanding <clears throat> what forces are shaping those stories but then understanding what you can do to start shaping those stories. And mm. I have a framework called Relate, Challenge, Resolve. Mm. And the idea is you need to first relate to their story before you can challenge their story. And then you can resolve the uncertainty that's preventing them from taking action. And what a lot of people start by doing is going straight to challenging. You're wrong. <laughs> you're wrong. And this is why you're wrong. But if you don't relate first, mm -hmm. then um, they don't want to listen to your challenge. So that mm -hmm. relate, challenge, resolve is, is a really important um, framework that I use with the leaders I, I train. And it, it actually comes from storytelling because mm -hmm. any story starts by relating to the audience, mm -hmm. presenting a character in a situation the audience can relate to that character then meets a challenge and they then have to resolve that challenge and this is all about the language of the mind and how how we form our beliefs and change our beliefs and you can take relate challenge resolve out of story and use it in day-to-day -day communication uh, each as individual skills as well wow and this is amazing because I could totally see that if someone were to say something about me, I'm a company and they, and I'm going to work with a possible client and they have this idea about my product or me that I find completely not true. It, it's kind of also human nature to kind of like, no, 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 that's not true. Here's what's true about me or my product or service. Um, instead of going, okay, I see where you're coming from and why you have these ideas and how they come about. And uh, let's see if I can, you know, once they, I understand where they're coming from they see that they're being heard now i can begin to challenge it by offering the reality 
based on first understanding where they're coming from. Yeah, it, exactly. And just like you said, it's human nature to go straight to challenging and not relate. <laughs> and I'll, I'll give a really embarrassing example, actually. <clears throat> um, you know, last year when I was in the in you know in the process of writing like the third draft of this book and relate challenge resolve was something I'd already been training people on for several years. I, I went out for a coffee with my friend um, to catch up with him. And uh, he had a new Chinese girlfriend, so he brought her along. And um, you know, we were chatting, we hadn't seen each other for several months. And um, he asked me how I was doing. <laughs> I, and I just started ranting about kids as much as I love my kids. But I, I was saying, oh my God, they're relentless. <laughs> There's so much hard work. Uh, I love them, but oh, they, they just don't give me a break and I want a break. And as I was saying this, his Chinese girlfriend suddenly started speaking up and she said, having kids is an honor. It's an absolute privilege. You should never complain about your kids. And I, I'm not the kind of person who likes to tolerate excessive levels of positivity. Mm -hmm. I'm a realist. And so I was like, yeah, it is an honor. I completely agree, but it's really hard work. And sometimes you need to run and so on. And my friend, he was smart and he changed the subject and we, we moved on from it. But an hour later, his, his Chinese girlfriend uh, had to go off somewhere mm -hmm. to do something else. And as she left, my friend said to me, you know, Jamie, when she was a baby, she was actually abandoned and she mm -hmm. was really, really lucky to get adopted. And I, I realized in that moment that when she was challenging me and saying it's a privilege, she had a story to tell. And instead of relating to her story, boom, I went straight into challenging and saying, no, my story is better. And it's, mm. it's just like you said, it's human nature to always go straight to challenge. Yeah. We have our stories and our stories are the best stories, but a much more effective strategy is to always start by relating. Uh, yeah, that's a good point because you don't want to be an awful person for complaining about your kid. I love my kids, but come on, they're driving me nuts. Yeah. But, you know, at the same time, not realizing where she's coming from and that she's not saying you're the worst human ever, but her story is that I was abandoned. So, you know, it's a privilege. Mm. So it's, it's, you wouldn't have gotten that had you, but how could you have even done it differently if you're going through that, you know, turmoil of wanting to express yourself? How could you have done it differently if in the, if you were to rewrite it, let's say mm. right now, what would what would you do differently? I think when you notice mm -hmm. you are getting emotional in response to something someone else is saying, that is a sign that they have a different story to you, and <sighs> in that moment. If you react on your emotions, that is when the, the you know, the differences start to escalate. Yeah. And I would say that is the hardest point, but that that's where it all starts. Mm. Because yeah. the thing about relating is it's ultimately about empathy. And, mm. and empathy is actually really simple. It's just in spending more time imagining being them. Mm. That that's all it is. And it, it's generally quite easy to empathize with people. You know, I, I can, you know, perhaps you can imagine um, for listeners who, who, uh, who, who don't know, I was actually late to this podcast and Christina <laughs> was very, very kind to, uh, uh, to wait for me. Um, and um, the reason was we had a, a, a sudden announcement from my compound here in Shanghai about a COVID test report. And I, I'm sure Christina can imagine my reaction when I, when I got that. It's mm. quite easy to imagine people's reaction, but the time when we most need to empathize tends to be the time when it's hardest, when mm. we have our own pressing issues and we're in a rush, mm. this is a priority for us, and it, we are emotionally invested. That is when we don't give a damn about your perspective. <laughs> and it's in that moment when we need mm. to do it most. And, and so I, I think, just getting into the habit of noticing when we get a little bit triggered or when that starts before mm. it grows up to be too big mm. and then taking advantage of noticing that and starting to ask, whoa, you seem to really believe that having kids is a privilege. And I completely agree, but I'm curious as to why that's, why that's such a big thing for you. Mm. Switching to asking questions. Yeah. I think that would be, you know, 
hindsight is is a great thing <laughs> yeah no. <laughs> no it totally is and and let's go back to the work because we are talking about leaders say you have mm. someone that's continually coming in late and i've known such people that every single day is a new excuse on the table and you're like this is it man i want to let him go because he is just not coming in on time instead uh maybe you invite them into your office and said tell me what's going on what why I mean, our time to get in is nine o'clock in the morning. and I notice you tend to come in late. What's going on at home? You know, mm. and, and maybe I'm just thinking this happened a long time ago to my boss um, and uh, they actually gave him a reprimand and a write up for it. Um, mm. But maybe there's something deeper behind his everyday lateness that we could work on. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's always good to start mm. by trying to relate and, and understand their situation. It, it might even turn out that there's just no good reason whatsoever. They just, they just can't be bothered. <laughs> They're just really bad with time. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, or they just don't care. They just don't want to be here. And, and, and they're, they're taking Well, that's a, a whole ride. new story. Then, then we yeah. got to look to, okay, it's been nice. All the best to you. We're going to have to yeah. let you go. Yeah. 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 But the, the key is to always start by relating. Mm -hmm. It's not always going to work, but... Um, it's a it's a really effective place to start. And so when you notice that there is a problem, they're not doing things the way you would hope they would do things, then that's time to sit down and have a talk with them. And I, I, I give an example. One of my friends runs a, a consulting company and in um, one of the sales people, her name was Carla, um uh, actually not her real name but i'll just call her carla uh she uh, he, he saw in her the potential to promote her to mm -hmm. a higher position but he wanted to test her first and just make sure that she was ready and so he gave carla some extra responsibilities and you know carla was quite positive and cooperative was like okay I'll, I'll do those and first week or so yeah she was good but after a while she started kind of slacking off on those hmm. and, and my friend um was wondering you know, why, why is she doing this uh, maybe she's not responsible enough but when he sat down and and asked her you know why uh, you said you would do this why are you not doing it anymore she said well i'm a salesperson and i get paid for sales and this extra administrative duty that you've given me um, kind of gets in the way of my sales job okay but it's not because you're being lazy it's because you don't see the reason to do this by the way Carla I, I I wanted to give you this to see if you'd be ready to take on this promotion and once she heard that then you know, like, now she's got a reason yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then the motivation changes but if you don't sit down to have those conversations in the first place you'll never discover what's going on and you won't stand a chance of being able yeah. to solve the problem yeah yeah and I love that you went here because I'm thinking she is probably really frustrated. I work hard. I'm a salesperson. I'm trying to bring in money into this company. And they give me this administrative task like what? I don't do my job good enough. You have to give me side stuff. So yeah. I could see how she would even be frustrated to get on more work on what she has instead of realizing, I just want to see if we could broaden you and bring you to a new level, a.k.a. running the department. Um, and that's why I gave you these tasks. Yeah, yeah, I could totally see now. Now she's like, oh, okay, now I get why it's happening. Totally. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, she's got her story and mm -hmm. her story changes as soon as you give her the reasons for that. Without exactly. reasons, you know, this administrative tasks, it's just extra duties. But now, exactly. oh, it's because you're trying to give me a promotion. That story is a lot more, a lot more motivating for. Oh her. yeah, absolutely. Well, this has been fascinating. I wanted. How can people find out more about you and get a copy of your book, The Story Habit? Where can they go and to find out more about your company? Mm, um. So you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm I'm very very active on LinkedIn. Just look for Jamie Dixon, uh, and you'll see my face on an orange background. Uh, or you can go to shapingpaths.com, my website, um, all one word, uh, to learn more about my, uh, you know, what I do and uh, the story habit. And you can also download a free copy of Story Habit Story Guide from, uh, from shapingpaths.com. Uh, and the story habit will be published around about July will be available then. Awesome. Awesome. And we have this scheduled to air on May 31st. So they can, can they get an advanced copy or, um, 
What do you think? Uh, they can uh, uh, they can get the uh, well if if they're interested in getting an advanced copy. Uh, I I will actually be sending out some advanced copies in June, so you can download my story habit story guide to get on my mailing list, and I'll be sending out some advanced people to, uh, advanced copies to people on my mailing list at that time. That would be great. Well, I just have to thank you again for joining us this evening, Jamie, and uh, sticking in there, even though a lot of chaos has been going on on your side. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming to Savvy Broadcasting tonight, Jamie Dixon. And thank you very much for your patience in waiting 15 minutes for me. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> no worries. You have a great evening. Thank you. Like, subscribe, and share this episode. To listen to more savvy episodes and savvy biz tips, go to www.lifeunscriptedradio.com. To find out about our paid sponsorship opportunities or how to become a guest, email Christina at lifeunscriptedradio.com.